Greetings once again. Uh, today we're going to be talking about graphing a sine function with all kinds of different uh, changes in parameters, different amplitude, period, horizontal or phase shift, and the vertical shift. Uh, and hopefully we can help you understand how to do that a little bit better and go through a couple of, a couple of examples. So this first equation we're going to do here is f of x equals negative 2 sine of 2 thirds times x minus 3 pi over 2 minus 1. So I guess before we get too much into this, we need to see, uh, you know, what the format of the transformations are. And this is one thing, and if you need to pause this for a second, you can certainly do that. But at the top of the page here, you see the basic format, a sine of b x minus h plus k, uh, where the a is the, is the amplitude, the b value deals with the period, h is the phase shift or horizontal shift, and k is the vertical shift. So the first task here is to get those values from the equation, know what they are, and then we're going to generate our x and y axis and our scale on those axis. And then from there, we should be able to get our graph going. So let's go and get started. So our a value here is negative 2. Our b value is 2 over 3. Our h value for our horizontal or phase shift, remember to change the sign. So this is going to be a positive 3 pi over 2. And our k value is negative 1. Also, before we really get going on the graph, we also need to figure out what the period is. And we do that by 2 pi over the b value, which in this case is 2 thirds. And we can simplify that to 3 pi. Uh, now, if you need a quick little refresher on how to divide fractions, I'll put a link in the description for a short video on how to do that. But um, it does come out to be 3 pi. Now, the line that I do, I also put a line here for what my tick marks are going to be on my x-axis. And the way we do that, and I'm going to show you a quick picture here of the paired function of sine. If you look at one period of the paired function, we can kind of break that up into four sections, right? So... The first section starts at the origin and goes up to the maximum, and then comes back down to the middle, what I call the equator, goes down to the minimum, and then goes back up to the equator, and that's one whole period. And again, if we can graph that, then we can just continue that pattern on for as long as we want to. So when we do our scale on the graph, I want to divide my period up into four sections. So Whatever the period is, we're going to divide it by 4. In this case, it's 3 pi over 4. Now, when we do our subsequent marks, and I'll talk about that in just one second, remember, each distance we do on the x-axis is going to be that amount. Okay, so if you need to pause the video here for a second and make sure you have all that information ready to go uh, as you kind of follow along on this example, you can certainly do that. So now I'm going to get my graph paper. And I'll bring this up uh, a couple more times. But I'm going to do a nice big x and y axis. So I'm going to have plenty of room here. And then I'm going to use what I just said as far as to mark my x-axis uh, for every 3 pi over 4 units. Now, when I'm on here, these are kind of small spaces, so I tend to skip a line for each tick mark. So that's the first one, my 3 pi over 4. I'm going to skip another line, and what would this be? Another 3 pi over 4 would be 6 pi over 4. 6 over 4 can be simplified, so we would do 3 pi over 2. Adding another 3 pi over 4, so 3 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4. 
12 pi over 4, that would be 3 pi. 15 pi over 4. 18 pi over 4, that would be 9 pi over 2. 21 pi over 4. And 24 pi over 4 would be 6 pi. And I can go backwards a couple spots, too, if I want to. Negative 3 pi over 4, same pattern. Negative 3 pi over 2. And I can keep on going as long as I wanted to. Uh, the good news here, actually, the x-axis is always might look kind of weird, you know, depending on whatever your period and your tick marks end up being. The good news is the y-axis is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to skip a line again. 1, 2, 3... You go up as far as you want to. Negative 1, negative 2, and so on. And this is the key step, folks. Uh, if you can do that, you're, you're about 80% of the way done with having a good, accurate graph of this thing. So I'm going to bring this back up for just one second. So we got that part done. What we need to do now, we need to see what I call the starting point. Uh, so to do that, we're going to use the horizontal shift or the phase shift and the vertical shift. So my horizontal shift is going right 3 pi over 2 units. So there's my positive 3 pi over 2 and I'm going to do a dotted line right down through that one. So I'm going to have that visual and then my k value is negative 1. So again I'm going to go down to negative 1 on the y-axis and do a horizontal line right through there. And the intersection of those two dotted lines right there is going to be my starting point. Because we know that this, the parent function of sine, and again, I, we know the domain is all real numbers, but the, parent, but the parent function essentially starts at the origin, and then we can kind of continue the pattern from there in either direction. So this intersection here is going to be my new origin. And now it's a matter of knowing what our amplitude is and following the pattern. So in this case, my amplitude is 2, but remember the A was negative. So what does that mean we have to do? My normal pattern would have gone up, middle, down, middle. But since it's being reflected across our axis, it's going to go upside down. So I'm going to go to my first tick mark, and I'm going to go down two units, since my, since my A value is 2. So down 2, down to negative 3. Back up to my, mid, my equator, my midline. The next tick mark, we're going to go up two units, so up to positive 1. And then next tick mark, and then back down. And that is my one period of this function. And again, if you can do that, then all we have to do, if you want to extend it farther out, we can go to the next tick mark and come back down, come back up to the middle, or we can go backwards if we want to, if we want to have some fun, and come back down this way. And we can continue that for as long as we wanted to, or, until we, or at least until we, we, we run out of paper. So that is the complete graph of our function. And again, here's the equation with all the different values and our final graph. Before I go on to one uh, that you can do on your own, uh, here is, I do want to point something out to you. So this same function that we just had uh, could be written like this. And you see that sometimes, uh, whether it be in textbooks or you know on assignment, what have you. Notice the difference. We just had a plain set of parentheses in here instead of kind of broken into the B value and the, and the H value. So if you see something like this, what you have to do, you would have, this is still the B value, but you need to factor that out 
of both terms so you can see this this pi value is not the h this is not the the, the horizontal shift so we need to do negative two sine parentheses two-thirds factor that two-thirds out and that would end up being three over two pi and then the minus one obviously doesn't change. So we're kind of doing the reverse of the distributive property. If you redistribute this, you get this. And notice that is what we just graphed. Okay, so keep an eye out for questions like this um, because this can trip some people up. You gotta make sure and factor that B value out. All right, so for right now, I'm gonna give you another one that you can practice on on your own. So here is another function. And at this time, I'm going to ask you to pause the video, make sure and write that function down, fill all those values in, find the period, find your tick marks, and then do the graph. Once you are finished with all of that, you can start playing the video again because I'm going to fill all those in and do the graph. Okay, so hopefully by now you have done your own graph and filled all those values in. So I'm going to go through this one a little, a little bit faster. So my A value here is just 1. My B value is 4. My H is negative 3 pi over 8. And my K is positive 2. Period, 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2. And tick marks, pi over 2 divided by 4, which would be pi over 8. And if you need to check your work there, you can pause. But we're going to move on and do our x and y axis. And there we have it. And then again, my tick marks, every pi over 8. And just like I always do, I'm going to skip a line. So pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, which would be pi over 4. 3 pi over 8. 4 pi over 8, pi over 2. 5 pi over 8. And you can keep on going if you want to. I'm going to go on and do the negatives. Same deal. Negative pi over 8. Uh, negative pi over 4 negative 3 pi over 8, and negative pi over 2. Okay, so we have that. And now I'm going to do uh, my h and k values. So I'm going to go to negative 3 pi over 8, and draw a vertical line through negative 3 pi over 8, since we have shifted left. Oh, I forgot my y values. I'm sorry. 1, 2... 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And then my k value is positive 2, so I'm going to horizontal line through positive 2. And lo and behold, there is my magic point. And now I'm ready to do my amplitude. This one's easy. My amplitude was this one. So, and it's not being reflected, there's nothing crazy going on. So, I'm going to go to my one tick mark, I'm going to go up one unit. Back down to the, another tick mark, down to the equator. Down one unit. And then another tick mark, back to the equator. And that is my one period. I kind of feel like doing a couple extra, couple extra cycles here. So, I'm going to go up one again, back to the middle down one, back to the middle, and I'm going to even go backwards a little bit. And then here is going to be my graph. Try to get it nice and smooth, not too spiky. And there we go. So that is the graph of our new function, and hopefully if you are checking your own that you just did, 
Hopefully this helps you out. Uh, and that is our sine function. Uh, I will be posting another video shortly about how to graph the cosine function. It's a little bit different, uh, especially when getting your starting point, but we will have that up shortly. Uh, and hope you look for, look for that. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching.